Dear students, in the previous video we have discussed about thermal dissociation reaction. Now our next topic is displacement reaction. What is a displacement reaction? It is a chemical change in which more active element displaces a less active element from its salt solution. A reaction in which a more active element displaces a less active element from a compound from a salt solution. Now let's take some examples that how this reaction takes place. In the first example the reaction is between copper sulfate and zinc. Suppose we have taken the solution of copper sulfate in a beaker and the solution of copper sulfate is blue in color. Then we will add some pieces of zinc in this copper sulfate solution. After adding the zinc pieces, we will stir it with a glass rod. हम उसको mix करेंगे. Then on stirring it, we will observe that the blue color of this solution will fade away, and the solution will slowly slowly become colorless. So how it will change? When copper sulfate solution is taken in the beaker and the zinc pieces are added to it, then after stirring, its color is changing due to the formation of zinc sulfate, which is a colorless solution, and the reddish brown particles of copper will settle down in the beaker. So we have observed here that this copper is displaced by zinc. and the formation of zinc sulfate has taken place so it means that zinc is more reactive than copper between the metal zinc and copper zinc is more reactive than copper and therefore zinc has displaced copper from copper sulfate solution and finally the solution of zinc sulfate is formed which is colorless in the second example you can see Suppose we have taken some dilute sulfuric acid in a test tube, and then a small piece of magnesium ribbon is dipped into this dilute sulfuric acid solution. Then we will observe that uh, brisk effervescence. Brisk effervescence means the formation of gas bubbles in a liquid takes place when at least one of the reactant is a liquid so here sulfuric acid is in the liquid state so when the small piece of magnesium ribbon is added to dilute sulfuric acid then brisk effervescence is observed that is the formation of gas bubbles that is the formation of hydrogen gas takes place and the salt formed is here magnesium sulfate so we can say that this hydrogen is displaced by magnesium because among these two magnesium is more reactive metal as compared to hydrogen so magnesium will displace hydrogen from this sulfuric acid and finally magnesium sulfate will be formed here now one question can be there that magnesium is a metal and hydrogen is a non metal but how this displacement is taking place then because metal will always displace a metal and non metal displaces a non metal but we can say that hydrogen though it is a non metal but it has the tendency of forming the positive ions also and therefore magnesium can displace hydrogen because it is placed in the reactivity series of metals also because of the property of losing the electron that is hydrogen has the tendency of forming the positive ion also therefore magnesium can displace hydrogen because hydrogen is placed in the reactivity series of metals because of its property of losing the electrons that is the formation of positive ions then in the third example you can see potassium iodide and chlorine means when chlorine gas is passed through the solution of potassium iodide then the colorless solution will turn into yellowish brown color and iodine will be separated it means that iodine is displaced by
by chlorine now you can see here that chlorine is a non metal and it means that chlorine is a since it since chlorine is a non metal so it will displace a non metal from potassium iodide now among potassium and iodine you can see here always metal is retained first during the formation of a compound cation is retained first and anion is retained afterwards so it means that cation is formed by the loss of electron by the metal so it means that potassium is a metal and iodide ion is an anion here because it is formed by gaining of electrons and gaining of electron is done by the non metal so iodine is a non metal here so it means that since chlorine is a non metal it will displace the non metal from potassium iodide that is it will displace iodide ion from the potassium iodide compound now among these two non metals chlorine and iodine chlorine is more reactive non metal as compared to iodine and therefore chlorine will displace iodine from potassium iodide and as a result product formed will be potassium chloride and iodine will be separated so these are some of the examples of displacement reactions so now the question arises that which metal is more reactive and which non metal is more reactive how we will displace any of the element so for that you have to learn this reactivity series of metals and non metals this is about the metals and in this series you can see that the metals which are given at the upper part are more reactive as compared to the metals which are given at the lower part means as we will move down in this series then the reactivity will decrease downwards so finally we can say that potassium is the most active metal and platinum is the least active metal because reactivity of metal is decreasing as we will go down in this series therefore we can say that if we are talking about zinc and copper then zinc can displace copper from copper sulfate solution because zinc is above copper in the reactivity series and is more reactive than copper so it can displace copper from the copper sulfate solution in the same way other examples i have explained you right now you can see them then this series is of non metals here you can see fluorine chlorine bromine iodine they belong to the halogen group and they are all non metals as we will move down in the series then also their reactivity is decreasing so we can say that most active is fluorine and the least active is iodine so finally we can say that the more active element displaces the less reactive element from its salt solution it is next a double decomposition reaction next topic is double decomposition reaction so double decomposition reaction is a type of chemical change in which two compounds in a solution react to form two new compounds by the mutual exchange of radicals now what is meant by in a solution in a solution means here the reaction in which two compounds among them at least one of the compound should be in the liquid state means the two compounds which are used in this chemical reaction among them at least one of the reactant must be in the aqueous state or if both the reactants are in the aqueous state then also no problem is there so in this reaction two compounds in the solution react to form two new compounds by the mutual exchange of radicals it is also called as double displacement reaction double decomposition reaction is also called as double displacement reaction let's take one equation suppose one compound is given ab and another compound is given cd these two reactants are used here among them in this compound ab a is a cation and b is an anion a is positively charged ion b is negatively charged ion and in this cd compound c is a positively charged ion and d is negatively charged ion 
so the cation of this compound and anion of this compound will combine to form the compound ad and the cation of the compound cd will combine with the anion of the compound ab to form the compound cb so here the mutual exchange of radicals is taking place in order to form two new compounds ad and cb these are of two types this double decomposition reaction is of two types precipitation reaction and neutralization reaction first is precipitation reaction so precipitation reaction is a type of double decomposition reaction it means that two compounds will be used and the mutual exchange of radicals will take place to form two new compounds but some conditions are here that it is a chemical reaction in which two compounds in their aqueous state means the two reactants which are used are in their aqueous state they react to form an insoluble salt when two compounds in their aqueous state will react then one of the product formed will be a insoluble substance called as precipitate they will react to form an insoluble salt called precipitate as one of the product and in such type of reactions are called as a precipitation reactions let's take example barium chloride and sodium sulfate they both are used in their aqueous state and when they react then the since it is a type of double decomposition reaction only so barium will react with sulfate ion and barium sulfate white colored precipitate will be formed as one of the product and the another product will be sodium chloride which is in the aqueous state now the question arises that what is meant by aqueous aqueous means the solution which is used in that solution the solvent used is water then when the solvent is used uh, water in particular solution then that solution is called as aqueous solution in this reaction you can see aqueous solution of copper sulfate is taken and when hydrogen sulfide gas is passed through copper sulfate solution then black colored precipitate of copper sulfide is formed and another product is sulfuric acid which is in the aqueous state so finally we can say that precipitation reaction is a type of chemical reaction in which two compounds are used either in their aqueous state to form the precipitate of a particular substance as one of the product and the other product may be in the aqueous state or may be a gas also so in this way we can say that precipitation reaction is a reaction in which one of the product is a precipitate when the two solutions are mixed means when the two substances are mixed either in their aqueous state or when gas is passed through one of the reactant which is in the aqueous state it is not compulsory that both the reactant should be in their aqueous state when a gas is passed through one of the reactant which is in the aqueous state then also this precipitation reaction occurs as you can see in this example then we have experiments to show double decomposition reaction suppose we have taken some solution of silver nitrate in a test tube aqueous solution of silver nitrate is taken and then to it we will add few drops of hydrochloric acid dilute hydrochloric acid then we will observe that a curdy white precipitate will be formed of silver chloride this symbol is used to represent that the precipitate of this particular substance is formed here so when silver nitrate and hydrochloric acid reacts when aqueous solution of silver nitrate and dilute hydrochloric acid reacts then the curdy white precipitate of silver chloride is formed and nitric acid is formed here so here the mutual exchange of radical is taking place and both are in their aqueous state so it is a type of double decomposition reaction but if particularly we will say that which type of double decomposition reaction it is then it is a precipitation reaction because here both are in the aqueous state and uh, the precipitate of one of the product is formed here in the same way barium chloride aqueous solution is taken and 
dilute sulfuric acid is taken when they will react then barium sulfate precipitate will be formed and hydrochloric acid will be formed so these are both examples they are the these are the experiments which can be performed in the lab also to demonstrate double decomposition reaction also double decomposition reaction may also occur with the evolution of gas means one of the product can be the gas also in the double decomposition reaction when iron sulfide reacts with dilute sulfuric acid when few drops of dilute sulfuric acid and iron sulfide which is a solid they are mixed then ferrous sulfate solution is formed and the gas evolved is hydrogen sulfide which is having the smell of rotten eggs rotten egg smelling gas is evolved out that is hydrogen sulfide so this reaction you can see here the mutual exchange of radicals is taking place to form ferrous sulfate and hydrogen sulfide so it is a double decomposition reaction but it is not a precipitation reaction because the precipitate of any one of the product is not formed here so it is a double decomposition reaction but not a precipitation reaction next is neutralization reaction the reaction between an acid and a base that forms salt and water only is called as neutralization reaction whenever an acid and a base reacts to form salt and water only this reaction is called as neutralization reaction example you can see here of sodium hydroxide sodium hydroxide is a base and hydrochloric acid is an acid they will react to form salt sodium chloride by the mutual exchange of radicals and water will be formed here so neutralization reaction is also a double displacement reaction then in the neutralization reaction a soluble base can react with an acid or an insoluble base can also react with an acid those bases which are soluble in water are called as alkali so first of all the reaction is given of an alkali and an acid alkali means bases which are soluble in water so neutralization of a soluble base that is alkali with an acid potassium hydroxide is a strong alkali it reacts with nitric acid to give the salt potassium nitrate and water in the same way different reactions are given in the book of the alkali and acid you can go through them next is neutralization of an insoluble base with an acid here copper oxide now this copper oxide does not contain hydroxy line so how it is a base copper oxide is also called as a base because it reacts with acid to form salt and water but this copper oxide is not an alkali it is an insoluble base it is not soluble in water so when this copper oxide reacts with acid then salt formed will be copper sulfate and water will be formed so it is an example of neutralization reaction of an insoluble base with an acid in this reaction lead hydroxide which is a base it contains hydrogen uh, hydroxide ion and it is an acid so base and acid are reacting to form the salt lead nitrate and water so these are the reactions of neutralization reaction so as a chemical process neutralization has many uses it is the last topic you can see in the first point it is given that when a particular person gets stung by a bee then formic acid enters into the skin formic acid is actually an organic acid its chemical name is methanoic acid and when it enters into the body then it gives pain and in order to get relieved from it we usually use the base slaked lime or baking soda slaked lime means calcium hydroxide we use uh, or baking soda is used baking soda means sodium bicarbonate so the place at which the bee has stung at that place we rub uh, with the slaked lime or by the 
बेकिंग सोडा सो दैट द इफेक्ट ऑफ दैट एसिड इज न्यूट्रलाइज बाई यूजिंग द बेस इन द सेकेंड पॉइंट इट इज गिवन दैट इफ अवर स्टमक ग्लैंड एक्सेज ऑफ हाइड्रोक्लोरिक एसिड सीक्रेट्स इफ अवर स्टोमक ग्लैंड सीक्रेट एक्सेज ऑफ हाइड्रोक्लोरिक एसिड then we feel pain and in order to get relief from it we take the milk of magnesia milk of magnesia means magnesium hydroxide or we take the solution of sodium hydrogen carbonate these are the bases and therefore they will neutralize the effect of hydrochloric acid and will give relief in our pain on the other hand if there is deficiency of acid in our body if there is deficiency of hydrochloric acid in our body then we will take the suitable organic acids in order to make up for it then it is given that if by mistake or accidentally acid gets spilled onto our clothes then we uh, use ammonia solution that is ammonium hydroxide solution to neutralize the effect and the fourth point is given about that if the soil is acidic in nature and is not favorable for the growth of the crops then we use calcium hydroxide in order to neutralize the excess of acid so these are some of the applications or the uses of neutralization reaction now the next is your exercise you have to complete it and the doubts you can ask to me thank you